In this lesson, we're going to be graphing polynomials and we're going to be using zeros, multiplicity, and end behavior. I've made individual videos on end behavior, multiplicity, but now we're just going to put everything together. So here's our first example. So it says graph the following using the zeros. So let's start with that. So what do we mean by the zeros? Well, the zeros is the place where the graph cuts the x axis. That is what we talk about when we say the zeros. To find the zeros, you just make the y value equal to zero. So you're going to go like that. And so what you can then say is that you can just remember that when you have the brackets, that's a good thing. So you could make this bracket equal to zero, this bracket equal to zero, and this bracket equal to zero. So it's going to be x minus two squared equals to zero, or x plus three equals to zero or x take away four is equal to zero. And then if you had to go solve, you'd end up with x is equal to two for this one, x is equal to negative three for this one, and x is equal to four for this one. And so those are the zeros on our graph. So we can go to where four to two, which would be somewhere around there maybe, or maybe a little bit, doesn't really matter, but probably there. And then negative three would be somewhere like that for example. But that is not enough information to be able to draw, but at least we've done the first part. The next thing we're going to look at is end behavior. Now remember, what end behavior means is what does the graph do at the end? So for example, on the right hand side, does it go up or does it go down? And then on the left hand side, does it go up or does it go down? That is what we call end behavior. So the way that we do end behavior is we need to imagine what the largest exponent would be here for the x's. So you don't have to go multiply all the brackets out. I'll show you a little trick. This x would be to the power of 2. So you would eventually end up with an x2 over here. For this one, you would just have an x. And for this one, you would just have an x. If you had to multiply those together, you would eventually have x4. So that would be the largest exponent that we have. So I only want you to look at that one when looking at end behavior. You don't have to look at the x3, the x2. You only look at the largest one. So to work out what happens here on the very right-hand side, you can think of a very large x value, which we can think of as infinity. Infinity to the power of 4, is that going to be a very large positive number or a very large negative number? Well, that's going to be a positive number. So what that means is that the end behavior is going to go up. Let's look on the left-hand side. So for this one, we use negative infinity. Now, if you have a negative to the power of 4, that's going to stay positive because it's going to be a negative times a negative times a negative times a negative, which makes a positive. So on this side, it's also going to be a very large positive value. So it's also going to go up. And so that is our end behavior. We now know what the graphs are going to do on the left and on the right. Now we need to look at multiplicity. For multiplicity, you need to look at your brackets. Okay, so here we've got our brackets. And what you need to look at is you need to look at the power. So that's a 2, this one's a 1, and this one's a 1. The rule for multiplicity is if it's an odd number, then it's going to go through. So it's going to look something like that. See how it goes through the x-axis? If it's an even power, then it doesn't go through, but what it does instead is it turns on the x-axis. So something like that, or it might be something like that. So it doesn't go through. Okay, so let's start with, for example, at this negative 3, which is this one over here. So that's got a 1, so it means that it's an odd number, so it goes through. So our graph's going to do something like that. Okay, so it's going to go right through. Then it's going to turn. We don't know where it turns, but it'll turn somewhere here. Why do I say it turns? Well, it has to go back up towards the 2. Now, if you look at the 2, it's an even power. See that? That means it's going to turn over there, so it's going to do something like this. So it's going to do that. So it's going to turn. It's not going to go through. Then it's going to turn again. How come? Well, because it has to go through the 4. Now, if you look at the 4, it's an I mean, odd power, so it's going to go through. And so your graph would look something like that. Let's do another one. 
So here's the next one. Now with this one, what makes it a little bit more interesting is that it doesn't have any brackets. So we can't just get the zeros very easily like we did in the previous one. We are actually gonna have to go and turn this into brackets. And so here's where we're gonna use the rational root theorem, which tells us that if this expression does have any rational roots, then the way to find them would be to look at all of the factors of this number and all of the factors of this number. So if we look at eight, the factors of eight would be positive and negative one, positive and negative two, positive and negative, not three, that was a joke. Actually it was and I made a mistake. And then plus or minus positive and negative eight. If we look at all the factors of one, that's just gonna be positive and negative one. The rational root theorem tells us that you must take all of the factors of this number, divide all of the factors of this one. So some of the possible factors would be um, probably, uh, you, could get, you could get positive one, you could get negative one. By dividing these using positives and negatives, you would end up with one and negative one. Um, if you had to divide these, you could somehow get positive two and negative two. If you had to divide these, and these, you would get positive four and negative four. And then if you had to divide these, you would end up getting positive eight and negative eight. So we could go use Descartes' rule of signs if we wanted to, to try see if there are any positive or negative roots. And if they maybe told us that there's gonna be zero, actually, let's go do that quickly. Let's go use Descartes' rule of signs. So to work out, and I've made a video on that before. So to work out the positive roots, or to work out if there are any, what you do is you just look at the sign changes, okay? So what that tells us is that we're going from a positive, um, we've got a positive number over there, then we've got a negative number, then we've got a positive number, and then we've got a positive number. So how many times do we see the sign changing? Well, there it goes from positive to negative, so that's one. Then it changes to positive again, so that's a second change, and then it stays the same. So there are two sign changes. So if you've watched my video on Descartes' rule of signs, you'd know that the positive uh, roots could be two, or you should always minus two until you get down to zero. So it could either be two or zero. Let's see the negative roots. To work out the negative roots, you have to rewrite this expression, but replace all of the x's with a negative x. So it would look something like this. And so it's gonna be negative x3, because a negative times a negative times a negative is a negative. And then this part here is just gonna be x to the power of two. And then this will become negative two x plus eight. Okay, so let's see all the sign changes. So here we have a negative, here we have a negative, here we have a negative, and here we have a positive. Okay, so there's no sign change there, no sign change there, and then there's a sign change. So that's only one. Okay, so there's probably, there could only be maybe one negative root. So this Descartes rule of signs doesn't really help us because they're telling us that, or it's telling us that there could be two positive roots or there might be zero. And then it's also telling us that there might be one negative root. So what that means is that all of these could be valid. But if they said that there was negative, I mean zero negative roots, then what I would tell you to do is to eliminate all of the negatives because then we know that they would not work. But in this case, that is not what happened. So the roots could be positive or negative. So we could possibly go and try every single one of these. So remember, what we're actually trying to find is zeros. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna try plug in these numbers into the places of x, and we are gonna keep going until we end up with a zero. That is what we're trying to find. We're trying to find zeros. So I'm gonna start by plugging in one. So we're gonna plug in x as one. And if you had to go calculate that, you're gonna end up with six. So it's not that one. So we take that out. The next one we're gonna try is negative one. So we're gonna put negative one in the place of x. And if we had to go calculate this one, we end up with a zero. Beautiful. Okay, so we know that one of our zeros is when x is equal to negative one. Okay, that's amazing. We don't need to go try any more now. You can if you want, but it's unnecessary because what we do now is we're now gonna use synthetic division. 
and we're going to use synthetic division with negative 1 and this expression over here. So we're going to divide this down and we're going to make it a little bit smaller because synthetic division is a way of dividing. So we're going to divide this and break it down further. So we're going to take that negative 1 and then we're going to use um, 1, negative 5, 2 and 8 where this would be x cubed, x squared, x. Okay, so the way synthetic division works is we carry down this 1, then we're going to multiply these two together, which gives us negative 1. Then you're going to add these numbers together, which is negative 6. Then you're going to multiply these together, which is positive 6. And then we are going to add, which is 8. Then you're going to multiply, which is negative 8. And then you're going to add, and that's 0. Then we're going to say x squared. Remember, you always drop the exponent by 1 then x, and then that. So x squared, take away 6x, plus 8. Make that equal to 0, and then what happens normally is that this is now a trinomial. So we know how to factorize trinomials, especially when the number in the front is a 1. It makes it very easy. So we just have to look at this 8, and we know that that is the same as 1 times 8, or 2 times 4. Now, if you're trying to make this number minus 6, how could you do that? Well, you could say minus 2, minus 4. So we're going to make two brackets, and we're going to say minus 2, minus 4. Put x and x, and now we can just say that x minus 2 is equal to 0, or x minus 4 is equal to 0, and so therefore x is 2, or x is 4. There we go. So now we have all of our zeros, x is 2, or x is 4. So we could have used the rational root theorem. But the problem, and we could have just gone and plugged in values until we ended up with three answers. Three answers, because that's what the fundamental theorem of algebra tells us, is that when you have three, then that means there should be three answers. But that could have been a bit risky for us, because maybe there were not going to be three rational answers. Maybe one of them was going to be irrational, or maybe one of them was going to be imaginary. And so we might have wasted time. So now we've got the zeros. To work out the end behavior, what you do is you look at the largest power, which is this one, okay? So that's x to the power of 3. Let's actually go fill in our zero so long. So we got that x is 2, x is 4, and x is negative 1. Now, to work out the, mul um, not the multiplicity, the end behavior, we need to know what the graph is going to do on the right, so whether it's going to go up or down, and then what it's going to do on the left-hand side, whether it's going to go up or down. So to work out on the right-hand side, what we do is we plug infinity into this expression because if you think about it, if you keep going to the right, you're going to get to really large x values, like 1 billion, 2 trillion. <laughs> so we just use infinity. So we say infinity to the power of 3. Now, if you take infinity to the power of 3, you can think of that as a million to the power of 3. Is that going to make the x value, or the, sorry, is that going to make the answer very big or very small? That's going to be a huge number. So when it's a big positive number, it means the graph's going to go up. If you had to look at this side now, we use negative infinity. Now, negative infinity to the power of 3, is that going to give us a positive number or a negative number? Well, think about it. It's a negative multiplied with a negative multiplied with a negative. So that's going to be a negative number. So that means it's going to go down. So there we've done the end behavior. Now we just need to look at multiplicity. To look at multiplicity, we need brackets. So we know that this expression can be written as three brackets because we have these three answers. And so we just say x minus, x minus, and x minus. And then we just go put in the zeros. So 2, 4, and negative 1. Right? Remember that. We've looked at that in previous lessons. If you know what the zeros are, then you can create the equation by just putting them into brackets. We've done this before. So, and if there, yeah, so, so, yeah, I'm not going to go too much further into that. So, what I did want to say, though, is that here we have two negatives, so we need to change that to a positive. Okay, so if we look at the multiplicity, we look at the exponent. That's a 1, that's a 1, and that's a 1. We've said in previous lessons that when the multiplicity or the exponent is an odd number, then it goes through, okay? And when it's an even number, then it doesn't go through, but it makes like a turn like that. So because these are all odd, we can say that it's going to go through. So it's going to go like this, through, it's going to turn, it's going to go through, it's going to turn, and it's going to go through, and then connect like that.
So that is what this graph would look like. So here's our last example. Now, because they've given us brackets over here, this means that finding the zeros is gonna be a very easy process. Once you have brackets, it's super easy. You, to find the zeros, you just make each of the brackets equal to zero. There we go. Now, don't let this three scare you. Technically, what you would do is you would cube root both sides. But the cube root of a zero is just a zero. And then this three and this three cancel each other out. So you just end up with x plus one equals to zero. And so therefore, x would be negative one. For this one, you'd get that x is four. And then for this one here, you would take the square root on both sides. And so you just end up with x minus 1 equals to 0, and so x is 1. Okay, so now that we have the zeros, we can go put that on the graph. See, we didn't have to use any synthetic division. We didn't have to use any Descartes rule of signs, rational roots. Once you have brackets, it's easier to find zeros. So let's go fill that in. x is negative 1, x is 4, and x is 1. But that's not enough information to help us decide whether the graph, what the graph's gonna look like. So we've done the zeros, so now we're gonna go look at the end behavior. To work out the end behavior, you need to know what the largest x power would be. You don't have to go multiply all of this together, but what you can do is just look at the x. So this would eventually become x to the power of three if you did have to go multiply it out. This would just be a normal x, and this would be x to the power of two, like that. And so if you had to multiply those three together, it would give you x to the power of six. So to work out the end behavior on the right-hand side, you can take a very large x number, like maybe 200 or 100 or a million or infinity. But let's use 100, it doesn't really matter. If you say 100 to the power of six, is that gonna be a very large number? Or a very, like, is it gonna be a very large positive or a very large negative? It's gonna be a very large positive. So because it's positive, it's gonna go up. Positive means goes up, negative means goes down. Then what you do is you look on the left-hand side and you take a very negative number, like maybe negative 100. But because it's in a square, because it's to the power of six, what would that do to this negative? What is a negative times a negative times a negative six times? Does that make a positive or does that make a negative? Well, well done if you know that that actually makes a positive because it's an even number. So if you have a negative to the power of six, it actually just becomes a positive. So that means it's gonna go up as well. So there we have our end behavior. Now we can look at multiplicity. To look at multiplicity, we need the brackets, but we've already got the brackets, so that's good. So the rule with multiplicity is that if it's an odd power, I'm talking about this power over here, that's a three, that's a one, that's a two. If it's odd, then it goes through. If it's even, then it turns, so it like does something like that, or something like that. Okay, so let's start with this negative one over here, which is not this one. I know you're saying that that's a negative one, but where did this negative one come from? That negative one actually came from this one over here. When we solved it, we ended up with x equals to negative one, because you take the one to the other side. So this one goes with this, this one goes with that, and that one goes over there. So if we look at this negative one, which is this one, it's got a three, so that's an odd number. So that means it goes right through. So when we draw the graph, it's gonna go through. Then it's gonna turn somewhere. Why is it gonna turn? Because it has to go back up to this one. Now that one is this one over here. Have a look at the multiplicity, it's an even number. So it's not gonna go through, it's gonna turn. You see, it's not gonna go through. Then it's gonna turn somewhere over here. We don't know where exactly, but it doesn't matter and it has to turn because it has to go through the four again. Now, if you look at the multiplicity on the four, it's a one, so it's an odd number, so it's gonna go through. So it's gonna be something like that, and then it's gonna join up with the end behavior over there.